So I've gone a little calculator crazy of late. I don't know. They're just so much fun to collect. They're cheap and they're small. So I thought I would take us through a few more generations of TI calculators. Starting with this, TI-82. Found this puppy at Good Goodwill. Um, it's, uh, it's like the TI-81 except for it has a link port in it. I believe it's still a Z80. This is the kind that I would have had in high school, although not every high school class required these back then like they do now. <clears throat> Their numbering scheme is kind of confusing. It reminds me of Microsoft nowadays. What is it? Windows 1, 2, 3, 95, 98, 2000, XP, Vista 7, 8, 10. And then of course they'll never count past 10. Okay, so this reminds me of the inside of the TI-86 that I took apart in the last video, as you'll see later on. Oh. Yeah, so this looks like the same uh, Toshiba chip that was driving the, um, what was it, the TI-86? This chip has a dash on it. Dash 70L, so that's some sort of memory. What type? I don't know. I guess I can look it up. I mean, this is clearly going to be the main system chip. Now, a lot of people say, oh, these, you know, these are Z80 based. <clears throat> and, you know, it could very well be inside, but that doesn't mean it's not a custom chip. Uh, one good example of that is the Game Boy. The Game Boy is Z80-like, but there isn't actually a Z80 in it. It has, you know, like a CPU, but it's also got the GPU and the controllers and a bunch of other stuff combined with it. Because, honestly, if you had, like, all the things you need for, like, a single board computer and a calculator or Game Boy system like this, it wouldn't be affordable. It's actually more affordable to spend the money and spin up your own custom chip if you're going to be making millions of them. All right, so this is a 32K 8-bit CMOS static RAM. So this is what's going to hold your programs and your variables. But what are these other chips? Now, we got to remember this is an early calculator, so it's probably not as integrated as later ones. Oh, this, oh remember before I was talking about how there weren't any TI chips in the TI calculator? Well, this actually is a TI chip. See? Um... It's got hyphen 82, so, you know, if I had to guess, I, I would bet this is the ROM. And that it looks to be a correct Amundo. Oh, look at the date, 1997. So it's the 20th week of 1997, so they're making this calculator well into the 90s. Um, okay, uh, as far as the size of it, it's, well, it's probably also 32K. I mean, that would be really easy to map with the Z80 because you'd have 32K, You'd have the upper 32K be the RAM and the lower 32K be the ROM because it, uh, the reset vector of Z80 is 0, 0, 0, 0. So what's this little guy? 84C00AM. It's got a hyphen, so again, it's making me... Well, there's not that much memory in this. Well, let's look it up. I've always wondered if Google like pre-caches uh, results based off what kind of things you like. Like if I type in 84C00AM, they're going to be like, well, Ben... There's an 84C00AM boat motor or integrated circuit. We're going to guess that Ben wants to see the integrated circuit. I mean, they probably do that. I mean, they profile everything else about you. Huh. All right. That's the Z80. It's one of those things where you can actually see it better on the camera than I can based off my angle of the light. But see this black square here? That's going to be your LCD controller. I mean, that's actually really common even with modern uh, LCDs, is you'll see like a black strip or a black square near the LCD glass and it's actually an integrated circuit. So if this chip here is kind of like a strange package bog standard Z80, although honestly I've never seen a Z80 in that package before, um, then this is probably being used for all the ports, you know, like the keyboard port, the data port, basically, um, I don't want to say glue logic, but you know, something that Basically provides all the peripherals, you know, like the inner. Well, the screen could have an 8-bit interface. Ah, there we go. Happy little life forms. Yeah, nice. So if you see, <clears throat> um, there's not a whole, there's not a very big data path going from the main board to the screen, right? I mean, obviously there's going to be power and then, I mean, man, I don't know for sure, but it could work very much like the common Hitachi uh, 4480 where you've got eight data bits and some control lines and then power and ground. I mean, you can tell this is power and ground because there's a big diode right there. All right, so yeah, you've got the RAM, the ROM, this CPU, and then this is probably like 
you know, the peripheral controller. I guess we can look it up. Although on the other, the TA86, they just had this, so it's possible they may have integrated the Z80 into the peripheral controller. 114L. Okay, these two gate array families provide a unique solution for designs which is a high ratio of pin count to gate. All right, so this is acting as um, a kind of FPGA. Well, they call it a, a gate array. Well, that makes sense because FPGA is field programmable gate array, which means you can program it wherever. But this is probably a mask array where they have, you know, basically a, for better, you know, for lack of a better word, FPGA that is set once. So they have like this, you know, kind of generic chip. They program it the way they need it to work with their calculator and then they can duplicate it many times. Um, yeah, so that makes sense. So basically there's no custom circuitry in this at all. Who knows, they're probably, you know, doing, you know, obviously, well, not probably, they'd be doing, a, uh, you know, like scanning of the keyboard, row, column stuff. And uh, yeah, so this chip would also drive the uh, communication port down there at the bottom. So this is definitely uh, the simplest TI calculator I've taken apart. Max and I had this idea for a musical. It was going to be called Aliens the Musical, based off the movie Aliens. We only came up with one song, though. We didn't even finish writing all of it. I'm sure you're thinking, what is the song? Since apparently everyone loves my random singing on this channel. <clears throat> okay, here's the song. So, the song takes place after the uh, drop ship crashes and they're stuck on the planet. And it's based on the famous line of, they mostly come at night. Mostly. Okay. Um, I guess the song is also called, They Mostly Come at Night. All right, so. Oh, what? The... Oh, okay, never mind. For some reason, I thought they were putting the, uh, putting the electricity through the... Why am I even putting this battery in? It's dead. Oh, well. Okay, so the song. <clears throat> and it's kind of like a bedtime, kind of like rhyme. So, it's, um... <clears throat> They well, could I do the, okay, I'll do the newt version. So there would be like a radio edit, you know, that would be like, you know, Peeble Bryson or something, but the newt version, you know, is supposed to be like cute. So it's like, they mostly come at night, mostly while I dream. Dealing with these aliens is harder than it seems. They took my little brother and then my mom and dad. Dealing with these aliens has made me very sad. All right, before I get to the next verse, here's the TA-85, which apparently is the not stripped down version of the TA-82. So I'm expecting it to be fairly similar. I suppose I should have kept the other one apart, you know, so I could compare the guts. Well, you can just rewind the video. <clears throat> All right, second verse. I mostly cry at night as I lay upon a bed made of mostly garbage. My doll is just a head. But then there came a savior, an angel from above to help me heal my broken heart and fill it up with love. Oh, all right. Well, sorry, buddy. All your programs are now lost like tears in the rain. Oh, that battery's even good, too. Oh, well. I could have made, like, that Seinfeld episode and tried to preserve the memory. The casing seems identical to the TI-82. Oh, anyway, then there'd be, like, the chorus, which would be like, Ripley, hold on to me tonight. Don't turn out the light. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, and then... Uh, we did have the the um, the bridge, um, <clears throat> like the big, you know, heartfelt, like show-stopping middle part. It's hard to be a little girl growing up in space when everything around you only wants to hug your face. It's kind of hard for me to sing it like, <clears throat> like Newt would. I do the Peebo Bryson version. 
It's hard to be a little girl growing up in space when everything around you only wants to hug your face. Reprise, they mostly come at night. Well, that's as far as we got. Okay, so as far as it being stripped down, we can see there looks like there's an additional controller on the LCD panel and then another controller there. Um, let's... I mean, it's still got... Oh, I wonder if it, this has the combined uh, CPU. How do we get this? Is there a screw for this? So if anyone wants to, uh, you know, uh, produce our Aliens musical, we still have to write, like, you know, probably, like, six more songs. Some of my ideas were, like, there's going to be a song about nuking it from orbit. Uh, I wonder what that's doing. So if you look here, well, yeah, this has got that folded over ribbon cable. Oh, this is also a, a higher resolution screen than the TI-82. So this is um, 160 by 100 and the TI-82 is 96 by 64. That's probably why there's additional circuitry. Yeah, and this looks a lot like the TI-86 where you just have um, RAM, ROM, and then the combination chip. So in this situation, I mean, this could still be a custom gate array, but it could be a custom gate array. Um, not gate arrayed, <laughs> gate array. This could be a gate array that, uh, you know, basically has, well, it would have to have the Z80 inside of it. Well, unless, no, no, that can't be the Z80. You might say, oh, that's the Z80. But first of all, it has way too many pins to be a Z80. And secondly, there's only like, what, 12 data lines going here and you'd have at least 24. You know, it's weird. They, they call it the stripped down version, but I guess, well, yeah, the screen, they would have saved money there. And, you know, what they don't spend on the screen, they have just an extra chip. And I believe this runs a little faster because this one is very similar to the TI-86, which I also have. I think the main difference is, uh, well, I think it had, the TI-86 has more memory. Got a nuke, nuke it from orbit. It's the only way we can be sure. We got a nuke, nuke it from orbit. Yeah, again, it's uh, pretty simple. It's almost like there's hardly anything to these, and TI just charges a bunch because they can. <gasps> what? TI had that. <laughs> TI had that. Uh, had that strategy long before Apple did. <laughs> no, Apple computers are totally worth the overinflated price. They're not just a Jewelry company, <laughs> Apple. Yeah, Apple is a fashion company disguised as an electronics company. <laughs> okay, you know how you know Apple is a uh, fashion brand? The iPhone cases have a hole in the back so other people can see that you're using an iPhone. I mean, you know, it's free, free country capitalism if you want to spend your money on a computer because it looks good. I think it was like the Apple keynote a couple years ago, like in September or whatever they call that event. And, their big innovation that year was um, uh, em emojis based off your own face. Big whoop de ding dong But in the promo video, they were showing all the stuff. And then the, real, the really telling moment was there was this, you know, this, this helicopter shot going over their new UFO-shaped headquarters in uh, Silicon Valley. And I saw that and I'm like, this is a religion. That's like, that's a glamour shot of look how cool our church is because you'd see that exact sort of thing like in a southern baptist texan mega church all right well this uh this one was kind of boring inside so what we're going to look at next you know after i stop ripping on apple although they deserve it oh i i, I love all these articles where it's like oh apple's getting rid of intel is this the end of intel i mean it probably is on its way out but you know, Apple is a really small portion of the market with computers and cell phones, basically. And I don't know. I don't think they're not really a leader. The only reason Apple is getting rid of Intel is because they want to spin up their own ARM chips and have more profit per sale. That's all it's about. It's not about what's best for the customer. It's about Apple hoarding as much of the intellectual property as, as possible. You know, because our market cap isn't high enough, apparently. Next up, we have the TI-89, which is the really fancy one. It has the computer algebra system. It can basically solve equations for you. And I got some hot glue on the screen. Uh, yeah, I think I got this one off uh, eBay. It cost me a whopping uh, $20. 
uh, as you can see, it does pretty print. Where um, well, I was trying to convert cups to uh, the speed of light the other day. Anyway, uh, this this calculator uses the Motorola 68000 allegedly. Ow. <laughs> That is one huge chip. This is the size Motorola 68000 that would be like in the Sega Genesis or an arcade machine. Look how big it is. It's like one of those videos. It's like when they have a picture of a giant bug and they've got it in your hand. And it's like, oh, that's so gross. I mean, this thing is so big. Like, what can I compare it to? Um, uh, a battery. Yeah. See, look how big it is. Well, anyway. I can't remember. I think I just bought an arcade board with a socketed uh, 68000 just so I could pull this out. It wasn't very much money. And like before, it has a link port on the bottom. It's also heavier than the other calculators, so um, I'm going to erase its memory and uh, see what's inside of it. So, uh, yeah, I've been collecting a bunch of these, and you know, even though this one is, ooh, it was shipped to me with batteries in place. It looks like there's a little bit of corrosion, so I should clean that up. So this is like one of the most advanced ones. I mean, I was at Staples and yeah, the TI-89 Titanium is actually more than the newest model. It's like 150 bucks. So it's pretty nuts. Eh, looks like I'm gonna need. So they got the quote unquote security screws on this one. Oh, no, that other kind was correct. It's like taking apart an Xbox controller. Slurm. Oh crap, are these not deep enough? Oh no. Ooh, well, this one, I think you should be able to get at this one. Oh, I'm Henry the Eighth, I am. Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before. Can't believe they haven't remade Ghost yet. Ah, uh, did I get all the screws? Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's the mother load. Come on. There we go. Happy little clouds. The T-89,000 computer began to learn the geometric rate. Soon, all of the computers were attached with the link cables. Hmm, it's got some foam inside there. Maybe it felt a little flimsy and they wanted to stiffen it up. That's weird. Um, the inside of it looks flatter, like the screen... The screen is at so a somewhat of an angle, but not as much as before. So I am, I am working on uh, the third revision of the automatic mask. I just... Uh, I haven't had a whole lot of time to work on it, and I've been trying to get ready for my fishing trip. Um, yeah, uh, it's... It's doing some things differently. It has a um, like a flexible rack and pinion that goes around the back of the head, so you get more travel. Ooh, look at this! Let's get that in a second. <laughs> you get more travel, and uh, yeah. So I don't know. Probably mid September. Okay, this is very fancy, smanchy. Look at all of this. Oh, that's the Motorola sixty eight thousand right there. Let's see if we can zoom in. Back up 20 degrees, rotate, pen left, crop. Yeah, yeah, it's a Motorola 68000 on the head. Uh, they have like Motorola 68020s, 030s, 040s. That's the kind of stuff they had like in the uh, uh, Performa Max in the 1990s. This looks like a pretty uh, standard, just 68000. Which is kind of funny because even in like, I don't know when this came out, like the late 90s, even then this chip was close to 20 years old. Um, yeah, so you've got a variety, well actually not a variety of memories, these look like the same memory twice. Well here, let's just, uh, let's just fit this chip right in place, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna guess probably two of these are gonna be flash and one of them is gonna be RAM. And then this is gonna be, again, just your general purpose uh, peripheral controller. Uh, yeah, they probably, if you look at it, there's a, um, there's, there's like a column and a row driver uh, for the LCD, and this one's got a little chip in it, so that's going to be a controller chip as well. But this chip, this is going to be your, again, your gate array that's doing a lot of your general purpose things. This is probably also 
off. This probably has some of the LCD tasks offset on it. If you notice, it also has a much higher pin count. Of course, part of that's going to be that this is a 16-bit system. Uh, yeah, and the uh, Motorola 68000, oh, I want to say it can access 24 megabytes of RAM. And of course, the thing to think about with that is, um, you know, they're going to be in 16-bit words. So, oh, no, sorry, I borked it. This is actually the flash memory. Um, uh, two megabytes of it, it would appear. Wait, F16? Yeah, yeah, so it's 16 megabits, which is two megabytes, so it's megabits divided by two. That's like if you have 200 megabit internet service, the actual megabyte download is 200 divided by eight. Just fun fact. And yes, this is going to be a 128K RAM, and there's two of them, so I guess that's 256K RAM. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. I think about 150, 192K is available to the user. Yeah, so it's pretty simple. So you got your your CPU, RAM, ROM, although it's flash, and then your basically your integrated controller chip. Because on this calculator, you can store programs in RAM, but you can also quote unquote archive them and put them into flash memory. Which means when I boot this back up, some of the games I put on it should still be available in flash. I wonder, yeah, they probably store the um, ROM and Flash as well, and they just probably, you know, protect that area of memory from rewrite. I mean, that would also save them some money, too, because instead of having to make a mask ROM, which is basically like a, you know, it's like what's in an Nintendo card, it's just a ROM that's basically permanent. You can't change it. Um, you know, they just put in a standard Flash and program it at the factory. The biggest difference with this calculator is it's all very flat, and, uh, the, you know, the screen is... It's, uh, yeah, it's not a separate piece for one thing. Well, I mean, it's a separate piece, but it doesn't appear to have its own separate uh, circuit board, which would, again, save money. I'm going to be careful. What was it? Oh, that was the keys. Oh, I got to be careful the keys don't fall out. Because the screen might be a bit loosey-goosey, too. Let's flip it over. Oh, not too bad. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's not bonded to the circuit board, but it's, it's very close to being, so. Oh, no, my nine key. Oh, this one doesn't have protective plastic. Look at that. Oh, man. They cheaped out. Looks like they were thinking about having a connector over there, too. See that? Cool. So even though this is a fancy calculator and has a lot more RAM, in a lot of ways, it's very much simplified. Cool. I'm going to get rid of this crappiness. Should probably throw away the batteries that were in there. They tried to make me go to calculator rehab. I said no, no, no. Now the question remains: Will the flash retain the memory? All right. Let's see. Varlink. Oh yeah. Look, everything's still there. Now I know what you're not thinking. How far can Ben's obsession with TI calculators go? Well, it can go about this far. Hey, it was on sale at Staples. How could I resist? So apparently this is like the modern uh, calculator, the TI-84. Again, their numbering system makes no sense. And yeah, it was actually on sale and got the nice gold. Uh, it's got a backlight display, so you can do calculations in bed. <laughs> uh, I heard that some of these were um, borking the ability to load your own code, though. Uh, it seems... Oh, yeah, it is definitely bigger than the other calculators. Let's compare it. Oh, yeah. It's definitely taller. I don't know why. Look at all the things it can do. Oh yeah, there's a tit the 89 titanium. They actually still sell that. 
So yeah, it has, actually it has not that much more memory than the TI-89 we just looked at. What comes in the package? An Apple product this is not. Wow, a USB cable. I totally didn't have one of these. Oh, it's USB mini. Yes, my favorite. And, uh, oh, a mini to mini cable. You know, I've never actually seen such a thing. So this is probably so you can hook two calculators together. Which means a calculator would have uh, probably USB ho USB host or USB uh, on the go support and also um, as a device. Then, you know, just your bog standard USB charger. And of course there's no manuals included, so you have to go online, of course, because you know, oh, it's green, which just basically means they're being cheap. It's not the kind of green they're talking. Oh, I guess it's kind of a quick start guide. Cool, which I won't read it all. Here's the calculator itself. Oh. Huh, well, let's get rid of this. Oh yeah, oh, the case goes on from the bottom. All right. Wow, it's so big. Texas Instruments. We make the best instruments in the country of Texas. Don't you mean the state of Texas? Where are you from, Yankee boy? Validating OS? Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Five times five. Well, it's definitely got a backlit color screen. Uh, let's see. Program. That's weird. This is like here, let me let me show you, for example. Um, um, like if you look on the TI-85 here, if you go into program, you get this list, right? Um, so like, well, let's say if I wanted to make a program, so we go back, edit, program, uh, my name, Ben, then you program it. So if I escape, hit program, names, Ben, right? And then uh, let's see, exit. This reminds me of the TI-82 or the... Well, wait, they said the TI-82 is a stripped-down version of the TI-85, but this menu is like the TI-82. Um, yeah, let me show you. Even though I took the batteries out of my TI-82. Kind of makes me wonder if the 84 Plus CE is using some sort of emulation. So I bet half the reason they just use the Z80 forever is because all their code's written <laughs> for that. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. Who needs old-fashioned batteries when you have a rechargeable calculator? All right, so yeah, so it's um, it's closer to the TI-82 in functionality than the TI-86 or 85. So that's interesting. Of course, I'm going to take it apart. I mean, duh. Wow, it's got really obvious screws in the back. Oh, look, it must have a charging dock. See, it's definitely thinner and lighter than the other calculators. Uh, what's the difference between, oh, ooh, apps. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, that's cute. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice, big, juicy USB mini port. It's a nice calculator. 2014, I guess it's somewhat modern. 1200 milliamp hours, that's not too bad. <laughs> Apparently the battery is made by Texas Instruments. Oh no, good thing I didn't get the service plan. So they didn't try to sell me one with this calculator. It's bizarre. This runs off a of Z80. I actually kind of doubt that. <laughs> I mean, I think it's more likely that it's a Z80 emulator running on a modern ARM. Does Texas Instruments make ARMs? I know they have their MSP430. Maybe it's an MSP430. Who knows? Texas Instruments is really big into like uh, low power stuff microcontrollers. I wonder if they still have anything in Texas. Texas Instruments. Usually if you see like the name of a city on something like Chicago Tool, it's <laughs> it usually means it's, um, yeah, China or something. Man, this is one of the more tightly tabbed modern electronic devices I've come across. Maybe it's because they expect kids to break it and stuff. I mean, you really have to push. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Man. Oh, no, okay, there it goes. Oh, look, we still have the lovely 
Uh-oh, don't steal this. <laughs> the nice shiny uh, TI foil. That's a little cheapy. See how it's it's touching the uh, USB slot, but normally what you'd see like in a laptop is there'd be um, like a conductive foam, right? Like a conductive foam pad that would be around something like this. Um, yeah, this feels like, like tin foil. Instead of screwing it to the case, um, they've basically, well, I don't think it's sonically welded, but it's uh, melted. See these little tabs are melted over the edge. Let me see if I can zoom in. There you go. Yeah, so I'm going to have to be careful. And I guess I'm going to have to choose to rip the foil instead of breaking the plastic. Even if you do not choose, you still have made a choice. Oh, what's that big chip? I bet that's the only chip in the whole thing. <laughs> oh, there's one big chip there. I don't know what it is. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's the only chip in the whole thing. Oh man, they have um, they have metal above and below those plastic uh, little rivets, so it's going to be hard to remove. Um, this should come free. Although I think all that's going to be on the other side of it just is just a keypad. So I believe that's that's the only chip in the whole unit. Oh yeah, what a bargain! <laughs> this almost feels like funky foam <laughs> behind the LCD. Then let's see if we can get a number off of that chip. Dad made a rubbing of the Grail tablet. It was found in Venice, Italy. They were rats, Dad. Rats? Yeah, big ones. Ah, that's why I middled you my diary. I didn't want to form the wrong hands. If <laughs> I type it into Google and guess what I get? James Bond. Oh, James Bond, 007 JB. Ah, maybe this is how they uh, they hide the uh, chip name. Hundred and what? Thirty dollars. <laughs> you know, Ti is just printing money with these things, right? <laughs> I mean, that's probably a date code right there, 1947. So 2019-47th week. But yeah, if I had to guess. If I had to guess, it's probably an ARM emulating Z80 code. That way they'd have all their legacy functions. I mean, feel free to comment below about my theory, but man, that's... I mean, yeah, right down here, just, it's just passives, you know, like charging circuit. I mean, that's that's it. I mean, well, wait, we can try to... Well, it's only just going to be a keypad. Oh, no, that's sonically welded too. See, oh my gosh, so yeah. This is part of the case, so unless I break these, I can't, I can't get under the case. <sighs> well, I guess all it's doing is holding the RF shielding. Oh, screw it. I'm going to break them. What's the worst that can happen? And then Ben died. Go buy us some coffee. Ah. Come on. And then there's nothing else underneath. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's probably, I'm sure these little guys are charge controllers here. Who knows what that is? You know, that actually might be the uh, the flash memory. That wouldn't surprise me. No, I think my magnifying glass is out in the car, but it looks like it says windbound on it. It's probably a quad, a quad spy um, memory. I guess I can look it up. I can barely read the numbers. <laughs> Because, well, how much memory does this thing have? Let's... <laughs> That's okay. Ooh, flash memory, RAM versus ROM. Okay, so 154 kilobytes, that would be, you know, child's play to have that on a modern ARM system. And three megabytes, and it's probably like four megabytes with one megabytes for application. So I'm just going to guess off the cuff that this going to be a four megabyte uh, flash EEPROM quad spy interface. Because what they, some of those chips do is they'll actually um, flash, they'll flash the code off of this as well. So this is a microcontroller, or possibly a microcontroller, without any um, flash on it. And what it does is it loads its code uh, at boot from, from here. That could also be why it says validating OS. It could be loading off of that chip. Um, yeah, let me try to get the part number. Oh, look, it's a serial flash memory device. 
I'm so shocked. <laughs> oh, not all datasheet.com. No, please, no. 3 volt, 32 megabit. 32 divided by 8 is, what did I predict? 4 megabytes. Uh, yeah, so quad spy. Um, I mean, you've probably seen memories like this that are uh, I squared C or spy. Uh, there's also a thing called quad spy where it's kind of like a uh, SD card where it works like a spy device, but it uses four bits instead of just one. So obviously it makes it four times faster, actually more than four times faster. Yeah, it says you, you get three megabytes of flash, but the first megabyte is being used for their code. There's no that there's no way this is actually a Z80. It says Z80 base if you go on Wikipedia, but no, it might be emulated. So yeah, that's the simplest calculator of all. It's just uh, you know like a microcontroller of some kind and a quad spy flash to load and store the memory. Maybe it's really large so you don't realize that it's kind of. Oh, I don't want to use the word rip off. You know because a lot of it is software. You know. But you're really not paying for the hardware. I mean, if you look at what's inside of this, it's actually. Uh, do you remember? I don't. Yeah, I think it was in the Ben Hex show when we did that, like that Oregon Trail, uh, that Oregon Trail pocket game teardown, and we found something pr pretty similar inside. It was like a uh, a quad spy flash, and then I think it had like a glop top ASIC. Can't remember, but. You know, it was, it was very simple, but basically it was a microcontroller that loaded a program off a uh, quad spy and then executed it. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's all about the software, right? That's, that's what it's really about because from a hardware standpoint, I mean, granted, you know, like making a Z80 system in the nineties was nothing special either, but this just seems really, I mean, that's the goal, right? You know, make it as cheap as possible. So you can make as much money as possible. Oh, at least it doesn't make me close the brackets like the 89 does. Saving hours upon hours of time. Uh, does it do like pretty print? Uh, I don't know. Where would that be at? Well, there you go. A look at over 20 years worth of different calculator design from Texas Instruments. Well, let me know if there's any other classic things you'd like to see broken down in the future. And yes, I am working on Mask Revision 3. I just haven't had a lot of time to work on it. I had to get a bunch of pay projects done before my fishing trip, which I'm going on in a few days here. But this video is pretty easy to put together, so I thought it would be a good stopgap measure. And this calculator doesn't really look anything like the other ones. It's so big. It's like a surfboard calculator. But look, it's gold. All right, well, uh, we'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep calculating.